Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm sure uh, it has already been acknowledged and celebrated that we meet on Dur in the lands of the Ngunnawal and Ngambri people, but I also join in acknowledging them. Minister Jaishankar, good to see you again. Thanks uh, for being with us today. Your commitment to our bilateral relationship is deeply valued, and uh, it's already been mentioned. Uh, your book, The India Way, since you were last, we were last together in Sydney, you've produced another book, uh, Why Bharat Matters, which I've also read and highly recommend to everyone here. It's a very uh, valuable contribution. Both books are very well worth reading. And I did bring you some Diwali sweets, but maybe uh, I'll get them to you. From my uh, Western Sydney uh, constituency, I brought you some sweets to celebrate Diwali and we'll get those to you. But it's wonderful to see you uh, today. Uh, High Commissioner uh, Bagley, uh, Your Excellencies, many High Commissioners and Ambassadors I see uh, in uh, the room today. Well, I thought uh, I would just, in my relatively brief uh, contribution to you today, deal with three matters. Uh, three themes to uh, the Ricena Down Under uh, dialogue. Uh, firstly, climate change and national security as a national security threat. Climate change is a national security threat. It's something which is being increasingly recognised in Australia. Uh, in the public discourse, we do tend to focus on the national security issues in the Pacific for understandable reasons. There are countries and friends whose very existence is under threat. Uh, and that obviously we are concerned about from a humanitarian point of view, from a, a uh, moral point of view, but we're also concerned about it from a national security point of view because that has implications for the geopolitical stability of our region. By definition, if a country effectively ceases to exist, it's going to have massive implications uh, for the stability and migration patterns in our region. But uh, it is, if anything, a more acute uh, issue in Southeast Asia. When you consider that four out of the ten nations that have been impacted, most impacted by climate change uh, over the last 20 years are in Southeast Asia. When you consider that in Indonesia, uh, 40 million people live in low-lying archipelagos which are subject to the impacts of climate change and will have to move. Uh, when you consider that in the period 2008 to 2018, 55 million people were displaced because of natural disasters and those natural disasters are becoming increasingly frequent, acute and less natural. Uh, we need to think about climate change through a national security prism in Southeast Asia as much as, if not more, uh, than we think about it in the Pacific. We certainly do that. Um, I'm a member of the National Security Committee of the Cabinet. We certainly uh, focus on these issues in our government. Uh, but of course, uh, as the Ricena dialogue comes together, I would encourage you to think about climate change and its implications as a national security prism. Secondly, um, the focus on supply chains, which I hope and imagine will be uh, factoring in your agenda. It's in Mr. Jaishankar's book, uh, Why Barat Matters, the focus on supply chains. Supply chains, from my point of view, as Minister for Energy and Climate Change, uh, but the particular focus on the fact that we have uh, a supply chain from which we get 99% of our products from one country in the most important transition that we've ever undertaken, the industrial, trans industrial revolution, the scale of the industrial revolution on a much shorter time frame, throw into that the AI revolution and data centres, and we have a massive task in a very short time frame, and yet we are reliant on one country for 99% of the goods that are supplied to us, and that's not an Australian problem, uh, that's a worldwide problem, and it's regardless of which country it was, any country having a focus of 99% would be an issue. Uh, so hence, our policies are quite complementary. Our future made in Australia agenda is, of course, an economic policy. We want to create more value, add more value to our natural resources. Uh, but it also does have a prism of ensuring sovereign capability in a, an uncertain time and expanding our options. We're not going to make everything we need here. We can't. But when you think, think of the fact that we've put 60 million solar panels on our roofs over the, next, over the last 10 years, we need to put another 60 million on over the next six years. 1% of those have been made in Australia. We're exposed if we don't fix that. So we want to make more things. We want India making more things. The future made in Australia policy and the make it in India policy are entirely complementary. We want Indonesia making more things, Vietnam making more things, uh, America making more things. Uh, we need to all collectively expand and diversify our supply chains. And the third and related matter I was going to raise is the importance and opportunity of cooperation uh, on these great challenges. Now, in many ways, this is all a truism, uh, but it's worth saying. This challenge is too big for any one country to face alone. And there are many, many areas we can cooperate. Australia and India are cooperating on solar technology and workforce development. Uh, and again, we have complementary and similar policies. Um, 
uh, Prime Minister Modi and the Modi government are looking at policies to encourage rooftop solar uh, uptake. And as the country with the highest rooftop solar uptake in the world, we can share some learnings and some insights and some, uh, and some key uh, findings. But um, cooperation extends way beyond that. Cooperation extends up to and including sharing energy. I was in Singapore uh, two weeks ago where the Singaporean government announced conditional approval for the Sun Cable development. Uh, which has the capacity to supply 20% of Singapore's energy needs. And again, it's working off our mutual interest. One thing that renewable energy takes, well, renewable energy takes many things. It takes sun and wind and skills and labour, but it also takes space, it takes room. And we have plenty, Singapore has none. So there's a complementary um, arrangement there where if uh, Sun Cable still has significant hurdles to cross and to pass, but if Sun Cable does become a reality, so a real symbol of the cooperation uh, that is possible. And uh, we are strong supporters to the degree that uh, we can be as ASEAN strategic partners, not ASEAN members, but ASEAN strategic partners, strong supporters of the concept of an ASEAN grid. Um, again, we're doing similar things in Australia. We already have the longest, deepest uh, energy grid in the world, which runs from North Queensland to the bottom tip of Tasmania to the middle of uh, the country. Uh, because if it's not windy in Sydney, it's probably going to be sunny in Queensland at that particular time and the hydro will be working in Tasmania. So there are great benefits for us to be connected. But the same principle applies for Southeast Asia. Uh, Vietnam's offshore wind, uh, Laos's pumped hydro, uh, great solar potential for Indonesia. Uh, the opportunity of sharing uh, those energy resources is a good one. And if we are connected uh, into Singapore via Sun Cable, we will by definition then be connected into the ASEAN grid as well, uh, which I see as a very positive uh, thing and a great uh, opportunity for our region in coming years. It's not just, I know this is a Racina dialogue, it's not just about our region, it is broader as well. Uh, one of the bilateral relationships we're doing the most on is with Germany, uh, with uh, green hydrogen, and the German and Australian governments working very closely for the development of Australian green hydrogen, the German government funding Australian green hydrogen because they know uh, that they won't be able to make enough green hydrogen for themselves and that they will need to import 50% of the green hydrogen needs. And I'm very pleased that uh, we agree that Australia can be the key partner for Germany in that undertaking. Again, that has a very positive geopolitical implications. So they're the three frames I thought I would share with you uh, to hopefully stimulate a little bit of discussion uh, in your very important sessions uh, today and tomorrow. Uh, climate change is economic policy. Climate change policy is economic policy, but it's also a national security policy. It's also industrial policy in 2024. Uh, and uh, it's very much a geopolitical challenge and a massive opportunity for our country. So with those few remarks, uh, thanks for joining the Racina Dialogue uh, down under. I'm very pleased to be part of the conversation today. I'm sure it'll be a positive conversation and uh, the strength and quality of the delegations that have been received from ministers and high commissioners and ambassadors recognises to me that you also see it uh, equally. So it's uh, appropriate that it happens here in Parliament House uh, and I'm very pleased to be part of the conversation. Thank you very much.